All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so this morning I want to talk about um, Roderick's comment and specifically the temple of God. So uh, thank you for these comments here. And so let's go. Let me just start off by reading what he has to say. Roderick, 1983, says, good video. Yes, Jimmy. Jesus has already died, buried, and rose for us all. However, when you read scripture, you're reading something that was future tense for the tribes. It clearly tells... Alright, hold on. Before I go any further, right there. However, when you read scripture, you're reading something that was for that was future tense for the tribes. Okay. I'm going to disprove that right off. I mean, when you start off on the wrong foot, man, it, it really discredits everything that you put forth. And so, you know, when you're commenting, I love your, to share your thoughts and ideas, but man, I'm going to, I'm a stickler. And if you ain't got something right, I'm going to tell you. And I'm going to tell you because I care. I care about you. I care about the truth. I don't want you to be deceived. And I don't want anybody else to be deceived either. You think about this. And um, Mark, Mark 13 is parallel with Matthew 24 and Luke 21. And the context of it is um, the disciples come to Jesus and they ask him, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And the very first thing that Jesus warns them of is, he says, Take heed, lest any man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying that I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. So many people, more and more as we build up to the end of the world, will be claiming that Jesus is the Christ. They'll be Christians. They'll say, yeah, Jesus is the Christ. And deceive many. I mean, many is a lot. It's not a little. It's not a few. It's not a minority. It's the overwhelming majority. And it's coming to a point to where if God let things continue as they are, there would come a point to where there'd be no flesh saved. Nobody would be saved. And, you know, think about back in the days of Noah, there was only eight people saved. Except that the Lord had shortened those days. No flesh should be saved, but for the elect's sake whom he has chosen, he has shortened the days. So the deception in the world today is unlike any other time in the history of of mankind and so that's why every single point has to be correct you, you don't want to get nothing wrong and there's no reason for you to get anything wrong the truth is right here in the Bible and the Word of God in Mark chapter 13 Jesus says and what I say unto you I say unto all watch what he is saying all throughout this and all throughout his all throughout the word of God what I say unto you I say unto all watch all right watch it's gonna play out just as he has told us think about this the words that I speak unto you they are spirit and they are life it's not just words on a piece of paper these are words that come directly from God above they are spirit and they are life so what Jesus says unto them he says unto all alright so you're making a terrible 
terrible mistake by saying, oh, it's only for a certain people. All right, it's not going to work. And I know, Roderick, this is something that you, it's a hurdle that you need to get over. All right. It's, it, you know, yeah, I hear it all the time. Oh, well, this is for the Jews, and this is for the Gentiles, and this is for the, you know, I don't know, for the Scooby-Doo's and for the Flintstones, and this one's for the other guys and the Jetsons and this. And, and, no. No, 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 no. The Word of God is for everybody. Let's see if I can come up with one more verse here for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints of morrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and tents of the heart now who does this apply to now that applies to anybody with a soul and a spirit and a joint and a morrow and a thought and intent of the heart anybody with a heart <laughs> this is everybody this is for everybody Jesus says what I say unto you I say unto all watch all right you're gonna see you're gonna find out you're gonna find out one way or the other and that's why I'm gonna keep keep on this all right, don't let nobody deceive you, Roderick. Don't let nobody trick you into thinking, well, this is only for these guys over here, and well, this is all for those guys over there. And no. The Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing even to the sunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints of marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The Word of God is for everybody. All right. It clearly tells you those that pierced him will wail because of what they are witnessing. All right. So <laughs> then let's go to Revelation chapter 1 here. Let's see what if that lines up. All right. Let's see if that lines up with what we read here in Revelation chapter 1. It clearly tells you that those pierced him will well because of what they are witnessing. It clearly tells you those that pierced him will well because of what they are witnessing. Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the, of the earth shall well. All kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, amen. Yeah, everybody. And this, this here, and they also which pierced him. Do you know what that's there for? You know why that's there? And when it says every eye shall see him, it means every eye shall see him. You know what that means? You know where you can draw the parallel with that? I mean, you can, it's multiple places, but I like to go to Daniel chapter 12, verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Now, those that pierced Jesus, those that thrust in their sword into his side, many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. So all living in the dead will see Jesus. Alright? They will all some, they will all rise, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. It is appointed unto man once to die. Oh, wait a second. What am I doing here? It is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. So when Jesus says, 
every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him includes every eye. And all the kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Why? Because they know it is judgment. The great and terrible day of the Lord. It is the end of this world. That's it. Game's over. It clearly tells you those that pierced them well, well because of what they are witnessing. Now when you talk about the temple, you are going off into two different things. The body is the temple of the spirit. Yes. But when John is having his vision in Revelation, see, and nothing but stinky stuff comes out of your butt. So let's let's get rid of this butt. Alright. <clears throat> when John is having his vision in Revelation, the temple mentioned during all that calamity is a building in Jerusalem 70 AD. Unless you believe there are two thousand year old men still living. Alright, before before I get into be okay, you can be. I'm I tell okay. All right, all right. Let me read it. Let me read it. Okay. So this is fair to bring up the, this temple in Revelation. That's fair. But I I want you to understand simply. This cannot be. Jerusalem seventy eighty. You're saying the temple of God got destroyed in seventy eighty, and so this is why I. I I try to encourage people to think and to use their brain because there's no way you're thinking and using your brain by claiming that the temple of God was destroyed in 70 AD. You're, not, you're just echoing what somebody else said. You're not putting any thought into it whatsoever. And I think this is a consequence of 13 years in the public school system where you're not taught to think but to echo or parrot what the teacher says. All right, so let's let's take a look at this. Look in Luke 9 verse 27, but I tell you of a truth there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of God. Now, I'll, I'll tell you right up front. I might go back to this, but I'll tell you right up front. This is talking about people will still be alive. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. The moment in the twinkling eye at the last trump, for the trump shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's a parallel. That's what Jesus is referring to when he says, There shall be some standing here that shall not taste of death right then we which are alive and remain shall be cut up together all right so that's pretty simple really it really is okay so let's go to this temple in the book of revelation let's do it this way let's do it this way let's go this way let's just do a simple t word search for temple and looks like we got 13 results in the book of Revelation. And let's just uh, start off with the first one here. Revelation 3, verse 12. Him that overcomes will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. And he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God which is New Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. Now, this is important here. Uh, you don't want to screw this up. There's no reason to screw this up. All right. Let me try to help. All right. So I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. Alright, so you think about this 
temple of God that is in heaven we are a part of his temple all right so in other words we are in God and God is in us all right so when we are born of God we have God in us and we are in God give me a second I gotta think about this uh, specifically what chapter is this here give me one second here to John 15 abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine no more can ye except ye abide in me I am the vine ye are the branches he that abides in me and I in him the same brings forth much fruit for without me ye can do nothing if a man abide not in me he is cast forth as a branch as is withered and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. All right, and then in verse 10. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. Okay. So, we abide in Christ and Christ abides in us we are one with God all right I'm still thinking is there more I want to share with you that was from John 15 by the way that was from John 15 that's really enough but there's there is more that I would like to share but um, yeah no uh, I think it's is it John 15 or John 14 uh, let me think here Just give me a second here. Right there. John 14. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Right? So, when we are born of God <laughs> we are in him in God and God is in us alright so when we read Revelation chapter 3 verse 12 and it says I will make a pillar in the temple of my God and he shall go no more out we are part of the temple of God right we are part of the body of Christ. All right, we are one with God. Now, what's that verse here? The wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ. And let's see, I know that's so. So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another all right so this is a parallel with what we're reading here in revelation chapter 3 and just it's apparently it's consistent all throughout the bible but when we are born of god we are part of the body of god right so when we read 
and revelation about the temple of God we are a pillar in the temple of God so we are part of the temple now this temple is not the temple that we're in now this temple that we're in now is a corruptible temple but we are putting our hope into a temple that Jesus has rebuilt an incorruptible temple all right and then on that day when Jesus returns we will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump we all we shall all be changed and we I'm not sure my my screen is up in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet them in the clouds and so shall we ever be with with the Lord I think I Mess that one up a little bit. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Right? So this is when we take off this old temple that Jesus has destroyed and then put on the new temple that Jesus has rebuilt. Remember what we read in John chapter 2 when Jesus says in three days I will rebuild this temple and they're like well for 40 and 6 years we've been building this sucker and you're going to you're going to rebuild it you're going to rear it up in 3 days Are you crazy? Well, that's what exactly what Jesus did, but he wasn't talking about their silly little building. He's talking about the body and again know ye not oh I wish I could remember exactly where that's at uh, first Corinthians 6 what know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you which ye have of God and ye are not of your own you don't know that? Well, Roderick, you're having a hard time with this, aren't you, buddy? Because you're stuck in the trying to stay in the physical, in the natural, in the state of the natural man. Right? The natural man knows not the things of the spirit. So, my, I'm going to encourage you not to listen to men but rather believe the Word of God all right it's, it's all about faith man it's always been about faith all right so the temple that is spoken of in the book of Revelation is this well there's 13 mentions. I better make sure I, I word this correctly. The new There's a difference between the new temple and the old temple. So when you talk about uh, two different temples, that you know, in, in that sense you're right. And I think everything's fair with your question here, with your comment. Uh, the misunderstanding is that trying to apply this to Jerusalem 70 AD. And again... The, the reason why these deceivers preach 70 AD is because they do not believe Jesus is the Christ. Right? That's the only reason. They don't believe Jesus is the Christ. They believe that the Antichrist will come and cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. That's what. That's why they teach. They don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ at all, and they're mocking believers or people that want to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. They're mocking believers and tricking your children into thinking this is talking about the Antichrist, and they're taking advantage of people that don't read the Bible. Right? But I read the Bible and I believe it, and I know with absolute certainty that this is the Lord Jesus Christ that
that has caused the sacrifice and oblation to cease. All right, without any doubt whatsoever, this is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. And he shall confirm the covenant. He's done that with many for one week and in the midst of the week. He shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. He laid down his life as the perfect sacrifice he has done it all for us even until the consummation which is his return which is the marriage between um, him and his bride the consummation when we come together when we meet the Lord in the air that's the consummation that's the end of the world and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate and that's the wrath of God being poured upon the unbeliever 100% guarantee it. Now this whole uh, teaching here in Daniel 9 is in regards hey, hey, even the angel says consider the vision. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins. Who did that? Jesus did when he laid down his life to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. So Jesus has torn down the temple and then rebuilt it in three days and it's all right here in Daniel chapter 9 and again in, in uh, John chapter 2 they didn't understand it. They're thinking, oh, 70 A.D., it's going to happen in 70 A.D., and you're going to destroy the temple? I don't know. You know. I'm just making stuff up. But they didn't understand in John chapter 2, and people still don't understand today. And this is... <laughs> this is uh, prophesied. This is taught all throughout the Bible that Hey, because you're not listening to God, God's going to choose your delusions. I will also choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. All right. Again, make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. And this is it's pretty uh, amazing really how often this is uh, in the Bible Matthew 13 for this people's heart is wax gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them further evidence of, again that Jesus is the Lord and God of the Old Testament. Because uh, this time here we read, I should heal. Okay. So anyways, uh, uh, I could go on about this one too. But it's clear that people don't understand because they don't believe what they read. They only believe what other men say. So they echo and parrot what other men say. And don't put any thought at all into what they're actually believing. Second Corinthians three, even unto this day when Moses even unto this day, this day right here, whatever day today is. When Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Right? Now all right, let's move on here. Um, okay. Unless you believe there are 2,000-year-old men. No. But I tell you, okay, so I think I covered all that. Right? I've covered that. I'm already going long here. Every, Almost everything you read, you think is for our future, is being told for their short future, before the destruction of Jerusalem. Okay, so any idea, any thought, any any teaching whatsoever that has to do with 70 AD 
is in error. There's nothing of any relevance, any significance whatsoever in the Bible regarding 70 AD. All right, it, the whole doctrine is based on the idea that the Antichrist will cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. The whole basis. All right, that's the center, the core of 70 AD. You take away that and you've totally destroyed the 70 AD doctrine. It, you can't, you can't, you can't preach it. You can't falsely, you, you can't teach it. The whole doctrine falls apart. It's just like Genesis 4. When people talk about, oh, wow, well, the serpent she doctrine, which she does, she, Eve, Eve had sex with the, with the, with the serpent, and then, and that's how Cain was born. Right, you can destroy that doctrine with one verse. Genesis 4, verse 1, And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived, and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Adam and Eve, they had sex. And she got pregnant and had a son. And that son was Cain. And Eve said, I have gotten... Wait a second, is that Adam? Adam knew Eve, his wife. And she, and she conceived and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. So from the Lord, not from the, 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 the snake. I mean, the whole doctrine is destroyed. And so also in Daniel chapter 9, when you just an, an admit or understand or whatever, that this is not talking about the Antichrist at all, it's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. He is one that is the, that caused the sacrifice and oblation to cease because he laid down his life as the perfect sacrifice. This whole idea that, oh, we're going to go back to the Old Testament and we're going to have to make animal sacrifices in the future. I mean, that's ridiculous. Yeah, there's a lot of people teaching it, but uh, it's ridiculous. I, I get it. No, just I mean, just because a whole bunch of people teach that doesn't make it true at all at all. In fact, you go back to um, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, when Jesus says, Many shall come in my name, saying that I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. And these people, they don't know the truth. They're, they've been deceived themselves. And again, it, comes, it goes back to, are, are people putting any thought whatsoever into what they are teaching, what they're believing? And uh, same thing uh, for you, Roderick. Well, what, are you, what are you believing here? That some of the scripture is for some people and not for you? And why do you believe that? Because that's what Reverend Schmitty said? Oh, you're going to trust Reverend Schmitty over the written word of God. Think about that. You don't trust God? You trust Reverend Schmitty? Why? Because he's got a fancy little square collar thing on his around his neck. Oh, why? Why is it? Well, he looks like a holy man. He wears a thousand dollar suit. Is that why? Because he wears a thousand dollar suit. Uh, uh, suit. And he's got a nice tie. Is that why you believe him? I mean, what's the reason? Why are you putting your trust in the Reverend Schmitty? I just think about why. Why are you believing this stuff? Because it's not in the Bible at all. It's not in the Bible at all. You're only getting this from other men. Revelation 1. I try to try to hurry up here and finish up. I know I've gone, gone way too long today. I get all that coffee in me and I get fired up and I get juiced up and I'm ready to talk I just ramble and ramble and ramble Revelation chapter 11 verse 1 and there was given me a reed like unto a rod and the angel stood saying rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein alright so I, I could get into all that but again, this goes back to what I said in the beginning that we are the temple of God. We are all the body of Christ. We are all part of this temple of God. We are all members of this temple of God. We that are born of God. Alright, so 
when the holy city the new Jerusalem comes down from heaven we are part of this city and then and very interesting here can I go I don't know let me see if, if I'm close here let me see if I'm close here and I saw no temple therein for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it oh goodness gracious oh goodness gracious and I John saw the holy city New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband and he carried me okay so da, 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 and I saw this, this this talking about the city of God talking about the city of God and then the city of God and I saw no temple therein for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it and we are in God and God is in us and we are all members of the body of God so I don't know what to tell you buddy if you're thinking of two different temples that's fair but this temple that we're in right now is destroyed and Jesus has rebuilt a incorruptible temple and that's what we're putting our hope into and so I appreciate did I read everything here yeah yeah so I appreciate this because it helps sharpen me and I hope somebody can gain something by by listening to this video all right I'm really hoping to Roderick that you uh, gain something as well but I already know that I'm gaining from uh, from uh, talking about this stuff I'm gaining understanding and um, again I just hope to, hope to share that with people so there's no reason for us to be in darkness there's no reason for any of this to be confusion at all this is all really simple stuff and to me it's amazing how it all connects with everything from Genesis to Revelation everything is so simple and so easy to understand once you're able to make the connections and it all starts by believing uh, you hear people say oh you gotta read the Bible you gotta study it you gotta go to school you gotta go to seminary you gotta have a, have a good preacher and a good pastor and a reverend and a blah, 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 blah. no no that's not the, that's not the key that's not the secret to understanding the Word of God the secret is believing what you're reading believing that the Bible that you hold in your hands comes directly from God that's the secret that's the key and and uh, that I mean that's it man. it took me years to, to figure that out it, and it just makes sense, doesn't it? You go look at uh, Rev, uh, Hebrews chapter 11. I'm just about done. I'm not, I'm not kidding this time. Look at Hebrews chapter 11. Check this out. This is incredible. It, what's it about, man? What's it about? What's, what's Hebrews 11 about? Well, it's about faith, man. It's about faith. And it's a rundown of the history of the world. And it's always been about faith always been about faith that's incredible man so I, how, how do I know how to believe in and read and understand you don't need to go to seminary school you don't need reverence many tell you what to believe all you need to do is believe the Word of God Psalm 119 verse 89 forever O Lord thy word is settled in heaven the Bible comes from God directly 